Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome here for the first time. My name is Ryan. Brad and I are going to be heading down to Wabo today. It's just a 30 minute flight, something like that. And this is a place I used to go all the time. But that was when I used to fly with MAF. I was just on loan with them for a year. And I flew down to Wabo just about every single day. So we're the red thing right here. We're coming down here to Wabo, which is 60 nautical miles. We're starting at 5,000, climbing to 10,000, and immediately all the way back down to sea level. While Brad's following for us, I'm gonna go ahead and get the plane ready and get it fueled up, everything we need to do to get out of here, probably within the next hour or so. As I do my interior checks every morning, I try to do it exactly the same so I don't forget things. Basically a flow. I start up here, check my airspeed, cage my um, secondary attitude indicator, set up my altimeter setting, check my igniters, auxiliary fuel pump, check all of my lights. I run my bypass down here. After that, I'm checking all of my trims. And set my trims up for my first takeoff. Next, I'm setting my flaps 20 degrees, checking all of my circuit breakers, make sure none of them are popped or maybe left pop from maybe maintenance or something like that. Check the status of my oxygen. Make sure my HF is turned on. Check out my autopilot here. Hit heading mode. Give it a twist. Make sure that my yoke is twisting both ways. Make sure the yoke is actually going out. And then when I hit altitude, it stops and my trim wheel is still going. I can flip off my trims up here and over here. And then my autopilot off stops everything as well as overpowering the autopilot is something I like to do as well. I'll flip my fuel on up here and then I'm gonna go sump and I've already dipped, I've got 600 pounds of fuel. It's a 25 minute flight down to Wabo, so let me show you how I'm gonna figure out how much fuel I actually need. So I've got 25 minutes down there plus 25 minutes coming back, 50 minutes total. I'm gonna times that by 5.3. What that is is basically 320 pounds of fuel per hour. Gives me 265 pounds. I'm gonna need at least one hour of reserve, 320. Plus I need two circuits at 30 pounds a piece, which comes up to 645. So that's my bare minimum fuel that I can take. We're just going down there empty and we're just picking up I think like six passengers. I haven't even checked the weather down there, so I'm just gonna automatically probably on, add on at least 50 pounds just for kind of flying around in case there's clouds. So let's go ahead and check the weather right now and find out what it's gonna be. So I use the Windy app to get all of my weather here. The first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna be coming down basically to this little airplane down here. So we're starting obviously in Garoka and heading down. I'm gonna go up to 9 a.m. and switch to my low clouds first, because that's, I mean, it's such a beautiful day out there. That's really gonna be my biggest concern is just, is there gonna be low clouds out there? It looks like it's gonna be clear. It's all overcast up in this area. So that's good, at least for the forecast. And then what I can also do is hit over here on satellite just to see if there's any clouds there right now. So it's showing that it's kind of clear, maybe with like some scattered, maybe some ground clouds or something is what I see from this picture here. So I think it's good enough for us to get going. We're gonna go ahead, fuel up like 100 pounds and get on out of here. Echo. 
I was telling Brad already, we're going to do the low route out there just because that's what we're kind of doing in our training anyways is low level flying with terrain and it's a nice day, so this is a great opportunity to do that. It's going to add about maybe five minutes extra to the flight, but we've got an extra 20 minutes of fuel on top of all of our VFR reserves today and it's looking like a beautiful day down there as well. But hopefully we'll be able to actually see a bunch of waterfalls on the way now that it's starting to be rainy season to yeah. some of these valleys they have some amazing waterfalls birds over on the tarmac yeah, they're big the echo wind ready right then clear for takeoff wind ready clear for takeoff number for takeoff echo i 1330 for 1380 Rotating 56. All right. Ignition, inlet, off condition, flaps, fuel and harnesses. 1330 for 1380. Air speed's alive. ITT's on the numbers. 50 and 56 rotating. It's today. Oh my goodness. Oh my. It feels such a huge difference. That's crazy when you go down to sea level and do that with completely empty, no seats and low fuel. Man, it's, it's super fun. Yeah. You can climb out of like 2,000 feet per minute. Yeah. All right, we'll go no higher than 6,000 on this flight. Okay. And have you done the Asaro South Gap yet before? No. Okay, so just keep heading on this direct heading right here, and then when you give him a call, just let him know that we're going to be doing the Asaro South amended 6000. Okay. Group Tower, November Tanko, Echo, departed time 30 on track 194, and uh, emitted altitude 6000 through the Asaro South Gap, estimating Wabo 55. Contact Morsby, 1201, 6 Just for the sake of what we're doing here, let's go ahead and slow down like this was an actual, I guess, well, I guess this would just be yeah, simulated that there is weather in the valley. So a few things that we're going to want to check for is we're going to check our winds before we go in there just so we have an idea of what we're going to expect. Um, turbulence, what maybe the side's going to be the best side of the valley to go on. And we're going to go ahead and slow on down until we're safe and outside of like the constricted area. So we'll just slow down to our 80, 80, or 80 knots to 20 degrees of flaps. When we're heavier, we're going to adjust those, those speeds maybe up to like 85 and if we're really full up maybe 90 just okay. to make it a little bit more comfortable but when you're really light 80 knots is no problem whatsoever so this is the beginning of the asaro south gap we won't go any higher and 6000 actually let's go down to let's say 5500 let's go down to 55 just to give you a little bit better feel of getting down lower we can go ahead and start coming in here, you can see that it goes and it curves around a few times. That quarter inch tailwind from the left here. All right, three knots, so it's not too much today. Yep. Down to 5,500. Before we get in here, let's go ahead and call up our guy. Um, let's just call him on, we can try him on 1201 first. Or is we 120.1, November Tango Echo position. Let's get our prop for it as well. We can't see around this next corner, so let's go to this side over here. So Caution, we, terrain. Oh yes, thank Caution, you. terrain. So we can see the soonest around our next corner. And especially if there was a lot of clouds, you're going to want to be able to give yourself as much time. to. And also, when you're sitting over here on this side, now you've got so much more room to be able to just easily maneuver out. Thinking about the winds and things, we've, now we've got six knots. <laughs> 500. I'm going to go ahead and call up for you. Okay. Was it 659 or 8? Or is it 6538 November Tango Echo transfer? Good morning, November Tango Echo. Saro South 
At this time, none above 6,000. Estimating Wabo 5, amended 5-7. I'm just going to add some time to it. November, I think we're cool. Okay, this one is 207. One zero zero seven November Tango Echo. Okay, so yeah, we had three knots going that way tailwind. Now we've got six knots of headwind here. Really, it's still not really that much at all. We can even stay at fifty three. That's fine. I was wanting to want it to be a little bit lower here anyway. So, but at this point, if the winds are looking good, I'm going to transition. I would transition to the other side of the valley so that now we can see around this next hill right directly in front of me. This is probably one of my absolute favorite valleys in PNG by far, just with all these kind of cliffs and the waterfalls that they have here, just insane. Like right below me is a waterfall coming up. That's pretty, per oh man, that is so pretty. Such a cool place to go camp out if we could ever get out here. Wouldn't have to worry about anybody bothering you though, that's for sure. Yeah. 500. Okay, so now that we've kind of got out of that bigger area, then we can go ahead and just speed back up. We're gonna go straight underneath of all these clouds right here. Or if you want, you can continue following along the river. If you want to do that, that's fine with me. We can also throw a terrain on here and you can kind of see where it goes. They also convolutes a lot. So we're basically gonna come up here and then take a left at that junction. That's the two a junction, the river junction. If I'm coming up a valley, let's say I'm coming back this way from the other way, what I'll do is I know that at this point I don't really want to go below maybe let's say 5,300 feet. I'll set my pre-select altitude at 5,500 so that if I go below 5,300 it chimes at me and right. that just goes, oh, I'm already getting too low for the next few bits. So if I'm, if I'm like slowly going down with the weather, I know that I'm, I'm, I'm not going to have enough altitude by the time I get to where I actually need to. Or if you're just going down the valley with passengers and you just want to show them, also set that up just to kind of remind you because you might be looking out at all the pretty scenery and go, oh crap, I wasn't even noticing how low I was. Uh, that's another awesome waterfall off here to the right. That's pretty much only pretty this time of year when there's a lot of water. This next, around this next corner, that's where the Tua Junction is. We're going to take a left there. And as you'll see, there's going to be lots of clouds, and at first it's going to look like, oh man, there's a lot of clouds. But it's just on the hilltops, so the valleys are going to be open, because they always are. It's a pretty sharp turn around that corner right there, so it's going to look like there's just tons of clouds as we start turning in there. If you're a flight sim and you guys want to try the same flight here that we're doing, uh, I'll leave a link down below to my Patreon page where I'll put the screenshot for this um, of our actual track and waypoints that you guys can follow along and fly this exact same river here and the gaps that we're going down to Wabo. And actually land at Wabo too. I know I have um, Wabo available for X-Plane on my Patreon page where it's like a patch you can add in and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably on um, Microsoft Flight Sim. I don't know if in great detail, but Pretty 500. Okay, so you can't see where the other river goes, but it's just on the other side of this. So that's the valley that we're heading up next. If you know you're turning right around this next valley, which, where, how would you position yourself into this valley? I know that I'm going to be turning left over here. Oh, you're going to be turning. I'm sorry. You're going to be turning right around that where those clouds are. You're going to okay. be going around that corner right here. You're going to come around. Um, I'm. As I'm making a left turn, I'm wanting to come on this side, but then I'm going to switch over to the other side so I can look around that corner easier. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Oh, there's plenty of room here, so I can go ahead and start coming on to the left as already. And just looking at these clouds straight ahead of us on the ridges up there, we were scheduled to go down 10,000. I don't even know if 10,000 would have, maybe even, we would have been pretty close just to scraping over them. So it's good that we filed for 11 coming back because um, we're going to be needing it to get over top of those. Or we might just take the low route back uh, to get all the way back. It's pretty being able to see like all these little gardens and yeah. villages and... 500. 
amazing how steep the ridge the the slopes are that they'll build gardens on. I know. But we're gonna just go straight down there where that last kind of big hill is that comes out through halfway through the valley. We're gonna go probably take a round to left in there and start heading towards the Mayamaku Gap. Okay which is right here. There's Mayamafi, which is MF, and then this EG or whatever, it's it's right in that little valley right there. Okay. And I think 6,000 is what we need. I think. Get through there. Go ahead and get through. Six, or start I'm, climbing at 6,000. I'm pretty sure. Deep. I don't remember. It's been a uh, while. We're going to head over that way now. Um, so why don't you head to like a heading of like... 240, something like that. You want to go over this ridge or you want to go around the corner? Um, yeah, you can go across these ridges to get to where we want. Actually, right there at your 11 o'clock, maybe 210 heading. Kind of see it's a big saddle. Okay. That's that's our Mayamafu gap, so we'll just head for that. And yeah, it looks like 6,000 is going to get us through there. Oh. First thing we look at, what are our winds doing? Are we at an altitude? If we wanted to quickly look at this terrain, it's gonna show, yes, we are at a high enough altitude to be able to go through. It would be better to cross coming from this side, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. And the reason, yeah, just for the viewers, is the reason being is that way we can always turn out here to the bigger area of the valley rather than turning into rising terrain. Once you know that you've, you're 100% able to make it through, then we're good. Wow, look at that waterfall straight ahead of us. Yeah. That's huge. And it's coming out of a mountain at the very top of the mountain. That's so, so wild. So kind of what we were sort of expecting is we're just going to be some scattered clouds all kind of just on the ground, but not an overcast layer. But we really don't want to go down below 3,000. Let's say, let's say 3,500 feet by this point so that we know that we can get over top of that ridge. If we head down to maybe around at that point right there, that's gonna be the best, so we can just make our descent rather than just coming over the top of the ridge and then just dropping yeah, down. Above there. Okay. It's good to plan, especially if you do have passengers or something, to come over here so you have a little more time to descend on down. Ten right here. Um, yeah, like where this little point comes out, just head kind of for down. that, so that way we could just continue our easier descent down in. All right, so this is a great time to throw your autopilot on. Let's take a look at the strip chart. Okay, Wabo, elevation 170 feet. So first thing that I think of is when we're sea level is if I have to do a go around, I'm going to be more worried about my torque than my ITT over torquing it. Okay. Blink 712 meters long. It's a 1% slope, which we're not even going to notice. It's just going to look flat. We have runway 14 and 32. I've never, ever landed on 14. Um, just because it's a little bit tighter, confined area. And it's a little bit of rising terrain over here. Not, not really that much, but just a little bit. But there's so little winds down here. I always land on 32. So I'm going to demonstrate that. We'll do a go around. I need to go around for my month anyways, and then you'll do it after that. See how the mountains are coming up here, and then they kind of drop down over here. That's why it's sometimes easier just to kind of track where we are, and then we can just cut in around these corners, whereas if we continued straight on the, like the direct track huh. to Wabo, now you've got those 4,000 foot mountains that you have to like immediately drop down over top of all the way down to the sea level. Hey, can you brief the uh Board procedure again. Did you already do that? The board? Yeah. We're going to power up 20 degrees of flaps. It's for 73 and watching my torque. As I'm powering up, I'm really looking at the needle on the torque as it's coming up and I'm just trying to bring it sort of close to the top of the green arc. Not really caring too much because we're empty. And then we'll go 20. Pitch for 73 or until we're clear of any obstacles, which will probably be immediately. Where did you say the abort point was? Oh, the abort is basically over top of the numbers. Like, okay. it's just a two-way airstrip, so it's not even really a committed, it's just a continuing point. We'll just head right through that little low area. We're here? Yep, that's where we're heading anyway, so. And hopefully there's enough clearance over the water. All right. 
We're within 10 miles. Let's set up our OPS. 500. For it. Um, there's runway 32. And it looks like there's a lot more, kind of, more of a broken, it looks like. I'm hoping that right over top of the river that it's going to be open, though. I'm hoping. If we get down to our pattern altitude nice and soon, it's going to give us more time to kind of evaluate what we want to do. But we want to get down below this cloud layer right here, but I think if you just continue straight ahead, it will just be just fine. I'll zoom in here. It looks like there's going to be a hill here, and where this river that's down below us goes out, um, that might be a good option for us to get over to the river. Okay, I don't remember. It looks like there's kind of hills all the way along here. But it looks like there's going to be a valley that goes out that way where this river goes out. So we want to get on that side. Now we'll turn off the terrain because it does us absolutely no good. All stations Wabo 1207, November Tango Echo will be joining the circuit Wabo. All stations Wabo 1285, November Tango Echo joining the circuit Wabo. Orsby 6538, November Tango Echo in the circuit Wabo. Report after landing. Five hundred. All right. Actually, do we need to be on the other side of this? I want to. It's on the other side of this ridge right here. Um, I'm thinking it's on the other side of that ridge. Oh, is it? There's a river here that we need to be looking at. Um, either that or it's down there. No, it's down there. All right. All right. I'll take the flight controls from here. Your controls. And like I said, I'm just going to do the just the pattern and then have you do it. You seen it? Yeah. Right there. Oh, there it is. Cool. So we're just going to do um, a left-hand pattern and hug that mountain on the side. 1,200 feet. We're already at 800. So we're basically going to be doing amended um, just because the cloud layer is really right where we need to be. So we're just going to stay at our 800. Let me get my trim going. We have flaps and that to go. We've got 10 degrees right now. We could do a left hand, I mean a right hand pattern as well because it's more open over there, but yeah. we'll just do the right or the left hand pattern just because that's what you're typically going to do in here anyway, so. so we would normally be turning final at a helicopter down there. 700, okay. All stations Wabo, 1285, November Tango Echo joining the circuit Wabo. 7. All stations Wabo 127, 1207, November Tango Echo joining the circuit Wabo. Spooling up. Is he what? Spooling up. Is looks, he? It looks like it's getting faster. All right. I'm going to go 20 degrees of flaps now. Does it look like he's still spooling? Uh, it seems... I can't tell. Okay. He's not, he's not taking off. All right. But it didn't even let me know that there's any traffic, but that's why it's a mandatory reporting 500. Point. Okay, so we're just going to go right down to our turning final, which is 700 feet. And we're just going to continue flying along that bridge out here until kind of the, where the ridge kind of comes down. Okay. That's where we would normally turn. It's a little bit easier when there's not clouds because you can see the ridge a little bit easier. It looks different than everything else. But you can see I'm just about right on top of where I want to be for my final, which is just right over the river, which is less than a quarter mile away, you know? So what's our VREF? 64? So I'm going to just start slowing on down now. 1.4 miles. 1.5, 1 1.6. I'm just going to go a little bit low further just because I need to we'll go full flaps now. All stations of Wobbo, November Tango Echo turning final Wobbo. And I'm just slowing down in the turn itself. But low already. As you can see, there's really no base whatsoever. It's just turning around. So when there's not clouds right here, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, 
like turning around and not getting low yourself. So let me just hold my altitude for a second. Uh, anyways, and then really kind of over those trees up there is where you're going to be doing your go around. I mean, okay. you're, you're committed or continuing. So I'm going to go ahead and just go around now. 20 degrees. And get my torque on up closer to the top. I barely even added any power at all just okay. to get up to the, I mean, to the top of the green. All right. All stations, Wobble November Tango Echo will be joining the circuit again for a left down 132 Wobble. All stations, Wobble 125 November Tango Echo will be joining the circuit again for a left down 132 Wobble. All right, it looks like he's just sitting there. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you the flight controls now. Now that controls. I had you up nice and high, you still have 20 degrees of flaps. You might as well just leave those in now and do a quick diving 180. Already got 20 degrees, and you want 84 on here. But you're going to want to be probably around 75 to 74, just as you're starting to turn, because you're going to want to slow down to 64 in your turn around. We'll keep 700 like I didn't, but we'll keep 700 until you're out on final, and you'll be at a better position than I was. Okay. All right, there's our 1.6, 1.7, right about this little ridge right here. We'll just go full flaps. And that's it. Okay. Yep. It's basically right over the middle of the river. So it's just complete. A 74, so on down to 64. Wabo November Tango Echo, final 3 2 Wabo. Two knots of tailwind. Hey, there's kind of a light green patch They're towards the beginning, there in the middle. Yep. Of what I'm aiming for. As your aiming point or touchdown? Aiming point. Okay. Go fast. Look like water. No, that's not water. Oh, you're good. Get all right onto this as quickly as you can, just because it's very soft on the sides here. The ground Wabo, cancel SAR, copy traffic hotel Foxtrot Romeo. Thanks guys for joining along. If you guys want to fly that same route, check out that link below below. <laughs> link below below. Anyways, thanks guys, and see you guys next time. Welcome here to Wabo. We're gonna weigh everything up before we put it in. We've just got actually four passengers plus one kid heading back up to Garoka, but they came with a lot of food. So we're gonna weigh every, every single thing up. That's everybody has asked. Do you guys weigh everything up or just go with standard weights? No, we weigh everything we put on the plane so we know exactly what we have. Gives us our takeoff weight and our landing speed every single time, exactly what we need. So anyways, I'll throw the drone up for you guys from some, maybe some past footage I have out here. Show you guys around a little bit. Thanks for joining along.